So today we're going to be looking at a different software, also part of the TPS suite of software. So TPS rel W is another computer program used for performing geometric morphometric analysis on specimens. Um, one of the key features is its ability to perform thin plate spine analysis, um, which involves using a set of control points or landmarks to create a transformation function, which can be used to walk the entire data set. So we're going to first um, look at importing your data, then creating a consensus file, um, and then we're going to look at um, partial warp analysis. So um, you can find the software um, here. On the from the Stony Brooks Morphometrics um, page, and here's a little description, so you can download it. Um, and then once you've downloaded it, I'm gonna open it up. Okay, so this is what it looks like quite a um, simple program. So first, you'll import your uh, data. So the data um, needs to obviously be in a specific format, um, which is going to be the same format that it will usually be if you've just exported it from TPS Dish. So um, I'll just quickly show you the format of the file that I just imported. Okay, so here it is. Um, so we've got all the coordinates for each of the landmarks, um, ID and image and scale for each specimen. And you can see from um, CPS World W that there are 64 specimens, each with 20 landmarks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compute the consensus. So the consensus is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be the average shape for all of our specimens. So it's been computed there. Uh, and now I can display it. Um, I think I'm going to need to share my entire screen for you to be able to see that. Um, OK, so here you can see it, our average shape. And as you can see, we're looking at a fish data set here. Um, so what we can do is we could save the plot if you wanted that, or we could actually just save the consensus shape, which is going to be the coordinates. So if I just show you that Oops. here, this is our consensus shape. So here it's just telling us where we got our data from. Um, this is the average coordinates for um, for those 20 landmarks of looking at the entire data set. Okay. So we've got the consensus there, but that doesn't really tell us anything about the shape variation in the data set. We know what the average is, but we don't really know how much any of the specimens differ from each other. There's not really much we can actually tell from that data on its own. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a partial warp analysis. So then we can display this as a partial warp ordination plot like this. So as you can see, it's uh, basically a form of, of, of scatter plots. And you saw we had 64 specimens here and here I've actually already set this where I've numbered them um, on options, um, label points, because it means we now know which specimen each of those points is. Um, there's other little things you can do to edit it as well. You can change the background um, or the color of the axes or the, um, the sequence. Um, so I'm now going to talk you through what this actually shows. So let me just um, stop sharing the whole screen. OK, so I've just um, quickly screenshot that because um, it won't allow me to share the um, plot window in TPS Roll W. Um, so, uh, as I was saying, 
Each of these points represent a specimen, and the positions of the points in the plot reflect their positions in high dimensional space defined by their partial warps. So the closer together the points are in the plot, the more similar the specimens are in their shape. So as you can see here, we've got, they're quite spread out. Um, so the plot's created by first calculating the partial warps of the specimens. Um, so these are the partial warps thought of as axes in high dimensional space, with each warp representing a different direction of shape variation. So once they were calculated, they were plotted in, this is two dimensional space, but you can also get um, three dimensional space for the partial warp ordination plots. Um, so this can then reveal patterns of shape variation among the specimens that might be more difficult to discern from just looking at the specimens themselves. So we could say if you've got um, a bunch of specimens that are close together in the plot, they're likely to belong to the same species or population. Further apart, might belong to different species or populations. Equally, there could be other factors, but it's a very useful way of um, exploring the shape variation of the specimens. Um, it's often used in evolutionary biology, where researchers may be interested in understanding how different species or populations differ in shape. Um, and then we can also look at um, or study other questions related to shape variation, such as the effects of environmental factors on the shape of organisms. So it's a very useful um, plot. And as you can see, it did not take us more than a couple of minutes to produce it um, based on our TPS file. Um, what you can also do, um, I'm not able to do this because I can't um, share it as I'm doing it, so it's a screenshot, but if you want a um, file when you're on the partial warp ordination plot, you can export the um, principal warps. Um, and this is really useful because um, you can then visualise them in other scatter plots or um, use other graphical techniques to better understand the patterns of shape variation on the specimens. You can do hypothesis testing to test about the factors that are driving the shape variation on the specimens. Um, so you could do statistical tests to determine if it's related to different environmental conditions or between different species or populations. Um, you can use it to classify the specimens based on their shape. Um, and then you can also do comparative analysis um, to understand how their shape has evolved over time or how different groups of organisms have adapted to different ecological niches. So overall, um, it's a really powerful tool. I do think that TPS RLW is something you should really add to your repertoire um, if you're um, exploring geometric or metric analysis because it's so quick um, and easy to um, find some really interesting stuff about your data set.